In this specific lecture, I would be telling you that how you can create a graph neural network using PyTorch, Geometric and OGB. These two are the libraries in Python for the graph neural networks, as mentioned earlier on in my video lectures. So the main idea from this kind of graph neural network is the message parsing framework. And the whole concept of graph neural networks revolves around this central idea, which is in fact to aggregate the information from the neighbor nodes and to further update the node information with the information from its previous layers and its neighbors. So now let's talk about its implementation using uh, Python. So we now need to install few libraries and here are some that we need to install OGB as well as a Python geometric library. And you, for these, after the, these two libraries, the downloading is very simple. And this uh, command, uh, you know, you can see on the screen target underscore data set is uh, OGBN. It download the data uh, from the network and the data set variable is, is an instance of class named pi g node prop pred data set which is specific to the OGB. If we take a look at this variable we'll see something like data number of nodes are uh, one lakh sixty nine thousand the edge indices are in, in there passed into function and we have the number of nodes and the adjacency list now this network already comes with a data set that is already split for the training validation and testing which is often referred as cross validation so uh, we can extract this using these four commands uh, which you can now see on your screen. Now we will define two data loaders to use uh, during our training and the first one will load only the nodes from the training data set and the second one from the network. So uh, the neighbor loader from the PyTorch geometric uh, samples a given number of neighbors from every node. Now we have a train loader function and then we have a shuffle function. We have uh, chosen a batch size of 1024 and uh, for the data loader and the input nodes, uh, you know, we keep on repeating this, uh, this, this process until we uh, get hold of all the data set parameters. So, as with every PyTorch architecture, we need to define a class with the number of layers and the number of layers, as I've already mentioned, that the two layers are sufficient in our case. And uh, we have used these two layers for the module list. And if the number of layers is equal to one, then we have to append that list and we have to uh, you know, uh, normalize it. But as you can see in the further commands that the self dot layers function keep on repeating this till, uh, you know, our normalization step is not achieved or as long as the value of the normalization remains false uh, as, as we set in. So now it's time to run a for loop where our self layers abandoned with the sage convolutional network you can you know uh, need to reset the parameters in your both layers and this is how they they work further you have the uh, to define the forward as well as the uh, looper function and these two functions they would help you to uh, achieve the training uh, and for the training purposes as you can see uh, we invoke the function self dot training 
and if your self dot layers function is greater than one then this function would you know repeat for uh, the n or i number of loops now the method you are looking at it is it is very simple because now you have to define really the batch size and the batch size refers to the number of no uh, data uh, set points you can take once uh, to train your network so uh, this is how the batch size using the self dot forward function and batch dot add for edge function you can see that it returns out all the uh, 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 the, the, the batch sizes now uh, we must define the number of channels of the network and this will be the number of features in our data set and as we have mentioned previously the out uh, underscore channels that is going to the number we are trying to predict and the hidden channels parameter is a value we can define ourselves for our hidden units we can set the number of layers and for each layer we add a batch normalization layer as i have mentioned and the forward method run a single iteration for a single pass and pass it on to the sage layer and then pass the result to the batch normalization layer uh, we have used uh, the relu non uh, linearity and a dropout layer for the regulation purposes and if you are interested in learning these fundamental parameters i have a full-fledged course available on uh, udemy where you can look at these so now moving on to define some parameters for this we have a um, sage model and we have the data set uh, number of classes with the layers two and we run it for iterations 100 we need to set our learning rate which in our case we have set it to lr is 0.03 and then you have to reduce this using an optimizer because our ultimate aim is to optimize a loss function now the test function uh, is there to validate our predictions and we have defined the test model function and that model function will return an inference and we can compare the true uh, uh, data set value with the predicted data set value and take that as a loss function gradient and this would be fed through back propagation to all layers now finally let's create our training loop for the iterations you know in the range one to the number of iterations or epochs you you set you need to train the model and you need to set that your loss would be nearly uh, equal to zero and for this we have also already defined a batch size and we have used a gradient method for the optimization uh, and this optimization method would help to converge the loss function so now you have the total loss and you have the training loss you have the validation accuracy you have the test accuracy and you want to print all these because this would allow you uh, for 100 epos to check that whether your validation score rises after you know uh, seven epos or not because you know uh, what we have seen that after a certain number of iterations you know the loss function would become steady so the conclusion is that GNNs are fascinating class of neural networks and you can see that in this specific example i have given you the pytorch geometric and ogb implementation of a graph neural networks so uh, I'm concluding this lecture by saying that PyTorch, Geometric and OGB are really helpful in, implement, in implementing graph neural networks.